Hi again. If you made it through the previous coding challenge on circomorphing, wow, I'm, I'm amazed. If you didn't, that makes a lot of sense to me. You could be here anyway. This is going to be much simpler. Oh, famous last words. This is probably going to be like really complicated and I don't know, check the time. Maybe this video is like three and a half hours long. My glasses are all smudged. My hair is falling out. It's been like, I've been here for like 17 hours straight coding things. <sighs> There's no windows in this room. Anyway, but, but here we go. Okay, let's see. So what do I have now? I have taken my last circle morphing coding challenge and I've made this very, very simple sketch. It's very little code in it. It has an array called circle path. It has the spacing variable. It has a function to convert a radius and angle to a, a, a polar coordinate to a Cartesian coordinate. And then it just makes the circle path and draws the circle path. Here it is. And there's the circle. It's so nice. It's so lovely. It's so round and elegant and quiet and I'm happy with it. Now, I want to turn this into a triangle and I don't want to get lost in all this code like I got lost before. Let's figure out if we can do this in a simpler way. And one way I could do this is, <laughs> this is all my notes from before, but if you think about it, remember I have the circle, it's all these points. Then I have a tr think about a triangle, which is really just the path of these points. What if I just start deleting these other points? So eventually I'm left with, I have maybe like 90 points around, but I'm left with just three points. I think I could do this. So what I need to do is start deleting the points. So one kind of crazy thing I could just try, which I know won't really work, is I could say, um, I'm going to say here at the beginning of draw, I'm going to do one per frame while circle path dot length is greater than three. Not while, if. <laughs> if circle path dot length is greater than three, if there's more than three points, let's get rid of one. So I'm going to say, um, um, I'm going to say uh, let index equal floor random circle path dot length. That's me picking a random index from this particular array. And I should do this at the end of draw because I should at least draw it once with all the points. So let's do this at the end of draw. Oh, this is, this is going to take, this, this, this video is going to be so short. I'm so excited. I didn't code the beginning part, but I did in the last video. Okay. So if I find that, then I'm just going to say circle path dot splice index one. I'm just going to delete that. Just, it's gone. I'm going to delete it. Let's watch this now. Let's, let's, Whoa, I got a triangle. So every single time, this is kind of kind of like morph to be a triangle, but it's not the equilateral triangle. So what I need to do is only pick a valid set of points. So what are the valid index values? Oh. <laughs> so I need to have an array. I'm going to call it indices. La, 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 la. In inde indices, plural of index. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to say indices, I'm going to have a variable called let i equals zero. And I'm going to say indices dot push i. So I want to put all the index values that are in this array into a separate array. Ah, there's probably a better way to do this, but this is the way I'm thinking about it first. So now what I'm going to do is instead of picking a random number, this is kind of nuts. I'm going to first, I'm going to use R, pick a random number that's part of the indices. Then I am going to, uh, and so this is indices.length. Bear with me for a second. I think I might need to diagram this. So what I'm doing is actually completely redundant and unnecessary, but it's going to allow me to do something else in a moment. So I have this array. You can imagine this is one array. Maybe it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight elements in it, zero through seven. And these are all of those points. These are all the vectors, x, y, x, y, these seven points. Now I make another array. which just has 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 in it. So now I can start saying, hey, let me take this out of here. What number is that? Oh, it's a 3. Go delete the third one. Ah. Ah. OK. Hold on. There's a problem here. If I'm removing things from the array, um, well, let me keep going with my thought here, and then I'm going to have to like fix this probably. So what I want to do is 
only put the valid index values in here, and then I can skip the ones that are the points of the equilateral triangle. That's what I was going to do. This isn't actually going to work. Well, I'm thinking this through and realizing it's not going to work the way that I hoped. Don't worry, we're going to get there. When we come back, let me show why this isn't going to work. This was a nice idea because what I was going to say is, um, so now if I pick the index is this particular element of that array, then I could splice it. This is going to cause all sorts of strange and weird problems. Oh, that was kind of fun. <laughs> what, what just happened there? Index, yeah, because, oh, whoa. So I put all the, so what I wanted to do is say, what I wanted to do up here, okay, just bear with me for a second, is if A modulus 120 is not equal to zero, then it's a valid index. I don't want to be able to delete I have a better idea. Well, okay, no, hold on, hold on. I gotta think this through. Someone's gonna give me a good idea in the chat, probably. Um, right, we could just mark some points as fixed or something. That's probably gonna be better. Interestingly enough, so this isn't gonna work. Why is this not gonna work? Because when I start, this is the thing, when I start deleting elements of the array, then the index values change as the array elements change. So while this was like kind of a nice idea of like, oh, let me just put a list of valid things that I can delete. Once I pick one valid thing to delete, then those other things move around and those, I have to like reshuffle all the index values. This is a terrible idea. So another thing I could do, one, one thing that's kind of weird that you can do in, um, in JavaScript is that you can attach properties to existing objects. So I think this might actually work for me here because I have all these uh, vector objects and so let me get rid of this idea of the indices. That was an interesting idea that I'm now going to get rid of. Uh, and let me, get, let me get rid of this here. Let me just comment this out. So what I want to do is with these, I'm going to say, I'm just going to attach a property like active. So this, th this function, polar to Cartesian, returns a P5 vector object. And I could make my own class and make my own object, but I'm just going to keep track, is this active? They're all active to start. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to, um, when I'm drawing them, I'm going to say if v.active, uh, whoops, then draw the vertex. So this has to go here. So as I only draw the active ones, so I can, instead of actually deleting it, I can remove a flag. I mean, I, I, the thing is, if I was going to do this in order, it would be much easier. I was going to do it randomly. Probably should have just done this in order because I could just delete them one at a time <laughs> and then skip the ones that I didn't want to delete. Anyway, I don't know why I'm doing it this way. Now I actually go back to my index thing, but I was going to say, I can also say if, if angle mod 120 equals zero, this is one of the uh, fixed ones. So I can also say it's a fixed one. This means it can never be deactivated. So one thing I could do now, and actually this is kind of ridiculous what I'm about to do, but I'm just going to say, um, I'm just going to, every time through draw, I'm going to pick a random one. I'm going to, uh, and I'm going to say, I'm going to get that vector. So circle of path uh, index. And then I'm going to say as long as v, as long as it's not a fixed one, I'm going to deactivate it. Now here's the thing. Uh, so this is me doing it randomly. I'm leaving all of them there. I'm never removing anything from the array. And so I'm just deactivating them as long as they're not a fixed one. And we should see here. Now the thing is, it's happening in this like weird long amount of time because it still could pick ones. So what I could do here now, this is kind of ridiculous, but I could say, what I could do is I could say, let um, active list is a new array every time. Oh boy, I'm sure I could do this in a better way. But now I could look at everything that's there. I could probably use like, oh, I could use filter. I could use filter. I won't use it right now, but filter is a way of saying like, give me a new array by filtering out all the ones that are not active or not fixed. 
that's what I should do. So I should say if, um, but I'm going to just do this a manual way. If circle path I, so, so here's my vector. If it's active and not fixed, then it's part of the active list. And so I can add it to that active list. So now I have this, I'm rebuilding this. I, I can do this because, you know, it's just like 100 points. I can mess around as much as I want. So I'm making this active list. And now I'm just going to pull from the active list. And there's no way it can be fixed because it couldn't be in there. There's no way it could be active. So I'm going to do this. And now, oops, index is not defined, sketch line 45, uh, I. And then, whoops, so uh, sketch line 53, I have to make sure as long as, um, um, as long as there's something there, right? Because when it gets to nothing, oh, I'm going to have to put it back. Ooh, I got to put it back. Maybe I'll leave that as an exercise. So let's, let me make this, um, let me make this circular path, let me make this stroke weight just two. Let me make the radius uh, 200 and let me uh, make the spacing just two degrees. So this will be more interesting. It's happening really quite slowly. But it, it's crazy how it jumps to because the thing is it can like, it's deleting all these little subsampled ones and you don't really notice it. So I think probably an order to deleting them would make more sense. <laughs> So like, for example, I mean, now this is ridiculous that I did all this stuff just to be able to do it randomly. But for example, if I just took the first one, um, that, uh, um, right, now this is one that Golan has already, I believe. So now I'm just deleting them one at a time. And then I could add them back one at a time. So <laughs> thank you. This is yet another example. See, you can see there's so many possible ways you could think about this. I'm going to be done with this. This was another coding challenge. I'll leave it as an exercise to put all the points back. <laughs> you know, I don't want to code anymore right now. Um, but you can see these are two possibilities. So let me remind you, if you go to um, github.com slash golon11 uh, slash circle morphing, here is where you're going to find many, many other ways of doing it. So, oh, super ellipse formula, that would have been a good way. Treating it as a rounded rectangle, oh, so many better ways than I could have thought of. So I did two coding challenges, kind of trying to do this triangle to circle morphing. I hope that you make some. You can tweet them at me, hashtag circle morphing at Schiffman. You can, uh, these, the code from my two will be on GitHub and you can, um, and you can, what am I talking about? Ah, you can link to your own on, uh, by making a pull request on my README and all of that. I'm playing my new outro music, which there will also be outro music afterwards. Boy, I hope I don't get a copyright violation for this music. I got it from a place where it said I was allowed to use it. Okay, thank you, thank you, <laughs> goodbye.